Welcome to Weather Extra on CBSN Bay Area. I'm KPIX 5 meteorologist Paul Hagan. Every week we are taking a closer look at a weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can do within our daily weather casts on KPIX. This week I'm going to talk about something we've already talked about quite a bit, and that's climate change. Specifically, I want to focus on the newest report issued by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on climate change. It's a mouthful, so let's start off there. What exactly is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change? The IPCC was established by the World Meteorological Association back in 1988 to provide the most comprehensive scientific information about climate change to the international community. The IPCC does not conduct its own original research, but it collects and summarizes the current peer-reviewed, that's important, scientific literature on climate change, its potential impacts, and the options for mitigation of future emissions. Their newest study is the sixth assessment report in the organization's history. This week's report is actually the first of three installments that the IPCC is going to put out between now and the end of 2022. This one discusses the physical science of climate change. The next two reports will deal with impacts and potential mitigation strategies. This first installment covers a wide range of topics, including climate extremes, regional climate change, global carbon cycles, and more. The big story in this report is the growing confidence in the link between carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, rising global temperatures, and accelerating climate impacts. This is supported by the updated climate models that provide more detailed projections about future conditions, which depend on choices that we humans make about carbon emissions. Do we continue along our current path? or do we try to flatten the curve of planetary warming? Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is the primary driver of planetary warming. Humans have released 2.39 trillion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere since 1850, and the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is higher now than it has been in the last two million years. The global average temperature is now 1.26 degrees Celsius, higher than it was back in 1850, which is the start of the Industrial Revolution. Nearly half of that temperature increase, about 0.6 degrees Celsius, has happened just in the last 20 years, since the year 2000. Planetary warming includes warming in the air, obviously, but also warming of the world's oceans, which leads to melting ice in the Arctic, Greenland, and Antarctica, and increasing amounts of water vapor in the atmosphere. The new report spends a lot of time looking at what cuts in our global CO2 emissions will be needed to keep temperatures from rising more than 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. In the Paris Climate Agreement, countries around the world agreed to take primary steps to limit warming to 2 degrees Celsius, but they also agreed to take additional steps to try to limit warming to 1.5 degrees C. Limiting that warming to a degree and a half would decrease the risks of food and water insecurity and potentially save global coral reefs from complete devastation. The new report emphasizes that meeting that 1.5 degrees Celsius target is not impossible, but that it is becoming increasingly more difficult because we are so close to that one and a half degree threshold already. Now, it's important to remember the world does not come to an end if we go past 1.5 degrees Celsius, but every additional tenth of a degree, which doesn't sound like much, makes extreme weather, sea level rise, and climate impacts on nature and people worse. Warming will continue until carbon dioxide pollution stops, and the more additional CO2 we add to the atmosphere, the more warming we will get in the future. This summer's unprecedented heat in the Pacific Northwest, deepening drought and fires here in California and the rest of the western U.S., and extreme rain in the Midwest are all consistent with the predictions discussed in earlier IPCC reports. The new report also emphasizes the risks of compound extremes, joint occurrences of more than one of these potentially damaging events that become more likely at higher and higher levels of warming. So it's natural to ask if there is any good news in this report. To be sure, there's a lot of bad news here. Changes that have been predicted in prior reports have come to pass. Scientists have very high confidence that warming trends will continue. On the other hand, we know what's coming and can prepare for it. Again, that's going to be discussed in detail by parts two and three of the report set to be released next year. An increasing number of countries, now including the United States, as well as states, cities, businesses, and institutions have made commitments to reduce their net carbon emissions to zero by 2050. Achieving those goals is possible, especially as wind turbines, solar cells, and electric batteries get more efficient and less expensive. And California is leading the way. From just 2014 to 2017, the state's wind power production capacity increased by almost 10%. Solar capacity increased by over 30% in that very short time frame. 
Achieving these carbon reduction goals will also have an economic boost by creating more clean energy jobs, reducing health care costs, and avoiding the cost of recovering from even worse and more frequent climate-related disasters. We know the path. Now we just need to make sure that we don't get distracted from staying on that path. That is it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Darren Peck will be back next week to cover another topic, and we are inviting you to play a role. If you have a weather or climate-related question, just email it to weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.